Well, the first thing is, um, this is Thanksgiving week, so things are uh, a little different. So um, remember, there's uh, no class uh, Wednesday or Friday. And there's no school. I, I don't think the building is probably going to be open. It's possible that the building will be open Friday, but um, on Thursday and Friday. Okay. Uh, anybody have any specific questions you'd like me to go over? Otherwise, I'm just planning to keep going through problems from the daily assignments. Uh, for, uh, for, you know, the okay, let's do that. Um, so this is, one difference here is we don't have water, we have refrigerant 134A. My favorite refrigerant is 134C. Uh, not really. Um, and uh, it's a solar power plant. That really doesn't matter to us, you know. I mean, except that it says you know, it gives us an equation for the area of the um, solar panels for the power. But other than that, everything is the same. Um, we are, so let's think about what we have in this cycle. Um, saturated vapor enters the turbine. Okay, so that's a key bit of information. We know that our state one is here, saturated vapor. So it's not superheated. Uh, and it doesn't say it's ideal, but it also doesn't say anything about, um, it also doesn't say anything about isentropic efficiencies. So we're just gonna assume it's ideal. So there, there, there. Okay, so there's our cycle. And so we only have four of these states that we have to worry about. Um, from state one to two is an isentropic turbine. From two to three is an isobaric condenser. From three to four is an isentropic pump. And from four to one is an isobaric, uh, well, that's not gonna. So we have the solar panel thing, that boiler, uh, Let's hold off on trying to speculate about what's going on there. It'll, it'll tell us any information we need to know about that because we don't know what's happening with the solar panels. Um, a saturated vapor enters the turbine. Um, so, and it says 60 degrees Celsius. So we know that the temperature at state one is 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and since it's saturated, that's enough for us to look anything up in the table. Um, since it's an isentropic turbine from one to two, we can look up the, um, you know, this is a pretty standard thing that we've done a few times. We can look up the entropy for state one, and then we know that that's the entropy in state two, and then we can use that with whatever we know at state two uh, to figure out the quality. So we're probably going to go that way. Um, 
The condenser operates at a pressure of 6 bar. So P2 is 6 bar, and that means P3 is also 6 bar. Uh, at state 2, since it's in saturation, this is also enough to look stuff up in the table. So that means once we find the quality here, uh, we can find anything else. Is P2 saturated? Yes, uh, anything inside the vapor dome is saturated, so you can look up anything in there. The problem is you don't know right now what the mix is of vapor and liquid. So we're going to use the entropy from state 1, since we know that's also the entropy of state 2, to find the quality, and then just having the pressure is enough to look up anything once we have that quality. Uh, Um, three is, well, uh, we know that this is, um, incompressible. And so we could look stuff up. Uh, we can also use the incompressible stuff to figure some things out about state four. Um, And it says we're trying to calculate stuff uh, in terms of the power developed by the plant. Uh, I don't know if that's, it doesn't specify whether that's net power or whether that's just pure turbine power. Um, let's just go with pure turbine power. It wouldn't be much different uh, to calculate it based on the net power. But um, okay, L well, let's start going through what we know. Um, so at 60 degrees Celsius, we, like always, we would just want enthalpies for all this stuff. So we can look it up for state one. Uh, 60 degrees Celsius. So that is that, and it's a saturated vapor. Um, so that's 275.99 for the enthalpy. Uh, no, the enthalpy. So 275.99 times 10 to the third. And we'll look up the entropy because that'll help us find the quality. Um, and that is... .8973 times 10 to the third. And so we know that that's also, since this is isentropic, the entropy at state 2. And now we can go into state 2. Um, and we know that the entropy, 0.89, 7, 3 times 10 to the third is equal to x times the entropy for the vapor. Oh, we don't know the temperature here. We know the pressure. Uh, so the pressure is 6 bar. So 6 bar um, 
the entropy for the vapor is 0 0.9097. times 10 to the third. The entropy for the liquid is 0.2999 times 10 to the third. I'm going to lose the 10 to the thirds for now. Um, so we got 0.8973 minus 0.2999 is equal to x times 0 0.9097 uh, minus 0.2999. Can someone calculate that x for me? It's pretty close to one. Zero point eight seven or eight eight seven. Okay, so now we know at state two we have that quality, and that's going to let us calculate the entropy because it's at saturation. Um, so the enth the enthalpy at state two is equal to 0 0.887 times the enthalpy for the gas. That's 259.19 plus uh, 1 minus this quality, so that's 0 0.113. Um, And the enthalpy for the liquid is 79.48. Can you calculate that enthalpy? 238.88. And that is in joules per kilogram. Uh, at the state three, we're in a saturated liquid, so we can just look that up immediately. Um, so for six bar, the enthalpy, oh, we just did that, 79.48. Um, and we have the pressure. Uh, do we know the pressure at state four? I guess uh, the answer is they don't tell us anything about that. So uh, it appears to be that uh, we can assume that this is an isobaric uh, boiler We'll just think of it as a boiler. Uh, so that means that the, so what's the pressure here at state four? And why do we care what the pressure is? I mean, uh, well, remember that for state four, we want to use this equation that says the change in enthalpy is equal to the specific volume times the change in the pressure. So 
we need to know what that pressure is. Uh, a lot of times we're given the pressure at state one. Here we are given the temperature. So we have to go back to the saturation table and figure out what the pressure is at state one at that temperature. Okay, so it was at 60. So yeah, 16.813 bar. So um, P1 is, what did I just say, 16.813? So P4 is also 16.813 bar. So we can assume no irregularities or no complications if it's not specified at all? Uh, yeah, if there's no other, I mean, there's no other way to calculate it here. So. I mean, you go into it sort of, to me, like I go into it sort of wondering, like, is there anything weird going on at the boiler coming from the solar thing? Well, we don't have any other way to calculate it. So the answer is no. Um, okay, so um, H4 minus H3 is equal to the specific volume times the change in pressure. Uh, so what's the specific volume? Um, we can, we can look that up since for a incompressible material, the specific volume only depends on temperature. We're assuming it's constant, but it's constant in a temperature range, you know? So let's just look it up in the saturation tables for the temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and, uh, okay, so specific volume is, we want it for a liquid at 60, so that's 0.9488 times 10 to the minus third. So zero point, what did I say, 9488? Nine four eight eight times ten to the minus third. Remember that whenever you're using these liquid tables for specific volume, uh, they're giving you an answer that's a thousand times bigger than the real specific volume for the liquids. So whatever it gives you, multiply it by ten to the minus third. And then we're multiplying that by the pressure at four. 16.813 times 10 to the fifth, because that's bar, um, minus the pressure at three, so that's six times 10 to the fifth. So H4 is equal to 0.9488 times 10 to the minus third, times 16.813, times 10 to the fifth, minus six times 10 to the fifth, and then plus the enthalpy at three, 79.48, times 10 to the third. So what do you get for that? 80,500. Okay, so I'll write it as, so, okay, um, and that's joules per kilogram. And now we have all the enthalpies. And now I, I just do that to start every one of these problems, find all the enthalpies, and then you can start thinking about the questions that they're asking. Um, we know that The work done, so W dot for the turbine divided by M dot is equal to H1 minus H2. Um, and it tells us that uh, the rate of energy output 
from solar radiation. Well, it tells us that, okay, the rate of energy input to the, okay, so the rate of energy input, which is uh, Q dot at the boiler, is equal to um, 0 0.4 uh, times 10 to the third watts per um let's say times the area of the collectors. Okay, so if we find the area of the collectors, we multiply it to this to get the heat transfer. Are you with me on that? Uh, the rate of energy input to the collectors from solar radiation is 0.4 kilowatts uh, per meter squared of collector surface area. Uh, and now determine the minimal, minimum possible solar collector surface area uh, per kilowatts of power. Okay, so um, okay, so we know we have this coming in. Um, let's see, what else do we know? We know that, um, so we know the work, uh, given to the pump divided by M dot is equal to H4 minus H3. Uh, we know the heat lost at the condenser per M dot is H2 minus H3. And we know that all the energy coming in has to equal all the energy going out. So, um, WP dot uh, plus QB dot is equal to W plus you. WT dot plus QC dot. Um, so QB dot is equal to WT dot plus WC dot minus WP dot. Um, you mean QC dot? Q, yes, thank you. Okay, so we know that. Uh, and so we can replace, we have, we can replace this rate of heat for the boiler. with this expression. And, um,
and I forgot to, so if I'm dividing everything by m dot, I got to divide that by m dot. All right. So now uh, we have this m dot that's sort of pesky, but we can, uh, we can write this 0.4 times 10 to the third uh, times the area of the collector over m dot is equal to um, wt dot over m dot uh, which is h1 minus h2 plus qc dot over m dot so that's h2 minus h3 minus uh, WP dot over M dot, H4 minus H3, so uh, these two cancel, uh, these two cancel, and we just get H1 minus H4. And so the area uh, of the collector is H1 minus H4 times M dot divided by 0.4 times 10 to the third. Okay, so that's pretty close. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the... Um, it doesn't say anything about the mass flow rate. I'm thinking we might just have to have that mass flow rate in there as a variable. Does anyone see any? Um, I mean, in order to calculate that mass flow rate, uh, I think you always have to have some information about an absolute amount of power input or power output or something. No one has any ideas on that, do you? Mm -hmm. So H1 minus H4, um, H4 is 80.505. H1 is... 275.99 over point four times 10 to the third Cancel the 10 to the thirds. And can someone subtract that for me and div divide? 38.7. 488, sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah. 488. Point, what? 71? Yep. 71 uh, times m dot. Okay, well, uh, it says the minimum possible solar collector surface area. P 
her power developed. Oh, okay, okay, yes, we can do this, I think. So um, the power developed now is, um, so the power developed we're gonna say is W dot power, uh, and that's H4 minus H3. So um, the work, no, we want the work from the turbine. So uh, WT dot over M dot is H1 minus H2. Um, and so WT dot is, uh, can, can you read me H1? I guess H1 is 275.99 times 10 to the third. 238.88. And then multiplied by M dot. And so, um, M dot is W T dot divided by, what do you get if you subtract those? 37,000. 110? 110? Yep. And now we can take this and this, and we have 488.71. Um, times how did it, 488.71. Did the area collectors divide by So we, so we want the area, so the area of the collector is this, right? Mm -hmm. And so we want an expression, so Somehow I ended up with the WT dot in the wrong spot, I think, right? Because the area of our collector is 488.71 times M dot divided by 37,110. They wanted it per kilowatt of power. Oh, well, they, okay, no. So, uh, so the area of the collector divided by WT dot is equal to, what do you get if you divide those two? Zero point zero one. One, three, one. Zero point zero. Oh. Zero point zero one three one meters squared. Yay. Oh, because it's per okay, okay. Yeah, we want the area per uh power. Any questions about that? It's a lot of algebra fiddling at the end of that one. But <laughs> yeah, right. But the, the thermodynamics of it, I, like, OK. That's always the same. On, yes, it's always the same. And I, uh, I am not going to have questions on the test or anything where you have to go through all this. I mean, I suppose it's helpful, you know. 
solve the ranking power cycle given the yeah and then and then come up with the efficiency of it that's yeah. about all i ever ask yeah and you'll have the equation for the efficiency in terms of the enthalpies okay um what's the next one you want to see anybody number six We did number five, I think, right? Didn't we? I don't think we did. Oh, then let's do number five. We're not going to finish it today, I'm sure, but um, so back to water. It's cool, um, I think, like. Look at how low the temperature is. When we're dealing with water, we're dealing with these gigantic temperatures and stuff. Uh, this was at 60 degrees Celsius, you know? Like, that wouldn't even burn your hand, you know? And that's the, that's the temperature coming out of the boiler for the refrigerant. I, in my head, it didn't make sense that it was like this temperature. So how is, how is it boiling? And then I oh, yeah. I that's right. So, yeah, I mean, really, like, that's what a refrigerant does is it gives you remember that all the important action happens at that phase change temperature between liquid and vapor and so um you're come to come up with a refrigerant you're trying to just come up with something that has its boiling point exactly in the right pressure range and temperature range for your application you know uh so it's back to water. It's superheated. And um, so that means that the temperature entropy diagram looks like this. So this is state one, state two, state three, and state four. And the biggest nuisance now is that you need uh, two properties to look anything up in a table at state one. But they just give us those two properties right off the bat. So at that point, nothing's any different. Um, it says, so we have our state one, two, three, Four. Um, one to two is the isentropic turbine. Two to three is the isobaric condenser. Uh, three to four is the isentropic pump. And four to one is the isobaric steam generator. Um, so at state one, entering the turbine, we have a pressure of uh, 10 megapascals and a temperature of 480 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's enough to use the table. So there's no extra difficulty here in the fact that that's superheated. Um, the condenser pressure uh, condenser pressure is six kilopascals. So P question. Uh, so the pressure is six kilopascals at two and at three. Um, at two, now we have enough to use the table. We just don't know the quality. Um, at three, that's a saturated liquid, so we can use the table. Between three and four, we can use the fact that this is incompressible. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we'll use the table. Um, and the table we want is for a superheated vapor, 10 megapascals and 480 Celsius. So water vapor. 10 megapascals is 100 bar. So scroll down to 100 bar, and then we want, I forgot, 480. So 480 degrees Celsius at 100 bar. Um, we want the enthalpy and the entropy. Why do we want the entropy? Yeah, perfect. So um, the enthalpy is 3221 times 10 to the third. And the entropy is 6.52. Let's just call it 6.53. 6.53 times 10 to the third. And so that means that S2 is also 6.53 times 10 to the third. And now we can start thinking about state two. Um, so 6.53 times 10 to the third is equal to the quality times um, the entropy for the vapor at 6 kilopascals. So 6 kilopascals is 0 0.06 bar. Um, Uh, this is, yeah, we need to be on the saturation tables, exactly. So we'll do saturated by pressure. Um, so uh, for entropy, we have 8.33 and 0.52. So 8. 0.33 uh, times 10 to the third plus 1 minus x times 0 0.521 times 10 to the third. Um, so 6.5, forget about all the 10 to the thirds, 6.53 minus 0.52 is equal to 8.33 minus 0.52 times x. And so what do you get for x? Uh, 0 0.769. 0 0.769. And now we can calculate the enthalpy at state 2. Um, that's equal to 0 0.76 nine um, times the enthalpy of the vapor um, 2567 times 10 to the third plus one minus this which is 0 0.231 times the enthalpy of the vapor at 0 0.06 bar. Um, uh, sorry, the enthalpy of the liquid at 0 0.06 bar, 151.53. I'll just call it 
times 10 to the third. And what do you get for that? 2009. 2009 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram. Uh, so H2 is 2,000. Oh, not, not 2,000. Just 2 times. No, it was, I converted to. So okay. Okay, that makes sense. Two thousand nine times ten to the third. Okay, we'll finish this next time. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Anyone have any guesses about how we're going to do this? It's starting to get a little like uh, repetitive, you know. But that's a good thing when your homework starts to get repetitive. Um, so now we'll use the incompressible thing to figure out. Uh, you know, we can just look up the enthalpy for three and then use the incompressible thing to calculate the enthalpy at four. Okay, that's all.